in our second lesson, we're going to answer the questions, how do I find the perimeter and area of right triangles, and how do I find the missing base or height of right triangles? Taking a look at workbook page 47, you see that we have a rectangle on the right. What is the area of the rectangle shown here? You know to find the area, we have to do length times width. Well, we have a length of 6, we have a width of 3. Therefore, our area would be equal to 18 square centimeters. Then it says, draw a diagonal line and make two triangles. What is the area of each triangle and why do you think so? So I'm going to draw a diagonal line maybe right here. And you can see I've now cut that rectangle in half. I cut it in half diagonally. And I created two, in this case, right triangles because I have those little boxes here that are telling me I have right angles. So I have two right triangles. What's the area of each of them? Well, each of those triangles is half of that rectangle. Therefore, half of 18. The triangles have an area of 9 centimeters squared, because nine, 9 is half of 18, uh, because they are half of the rectangle. Now, we're skipping around a little bit, moving on to workbook page 48. It says a triangle with a right angle, you know, has that square corner, is called a right triangle. The area of any right triangle is half the area of a rectangle with the same base and height. Or the same area as a rectangle with half the base or height. These rectangles are called related rectangles. So related rectangles are what's creating your right triangles and just remember that your right triangles are half of their related rectangles. Take a look at number 8. I can see that the area of this rectangle is going to be 20 because I have a um, length of 4 and a width of 5. So 5 times 4 would be 20. However, I'm not worried about the whole rectangle, I'm worried about half of that rectangle. I want to know the area of this right triangle. So I would find the area of the rectangle first, which is 5 times 4, and then I would divide it by 2. That means the area of the triangle is actually 10 square centimeters, because 10 is half of the 20 square centimeters for the whole related rectangle. Now look at number 9. Number 9 is a little bit different. Would you believe that this rectangle here is actually the same size as the whole right triangle. Don't believe me? Imagine that I took off just this section right here. I cut it off and I moved it over to here. It would fit perfectly. All, would, all that would be left would be that rectangle. This is an example of a rectangle that has half the base or height. If you see, the height here is definitely 3. No doubt about it. The height of that um, well rectangle as well as the right triangle is 3. The base of this rectangle is 4. And you're probably wondering how I got 4. I got 4 because I can see that this section right here is half of the whole base. That means this is 4 here, this is 4 here. So here we have a base um, that's, well, the base of the rectangle that's half the base of the triangle. So if I wanted to find the area of this related rectangle, all I would need to do is 3 times 4. I don't have to worry about the half part because I've already gotten it. This was half. So let's see, 3 times 4 would give me 12, 12 square centimeters. And if you don't believe me, 
go back to the original way. Maybe turn this related rectangle um, this way. So here you would have to do 3 times 8, which is 24. That would give you the area of the whole rectangle. But then cut it in half, there's 12. Over here, number 10, we can apply that same idea from number 9. This related rectangle is actually the same size as that entire blue right triangle. That's because this section right here could be cut off and moved over to form the related rectangle. Here we have a related rectangle that has a base of 4. So here's our base of 4 and it actually has a height of 2. Now if you're wondering where I got the 2 from, again, I know that the height of this rectangle is half the height of the triangle. So here to here must be 2, here to here must be 2 because that would give me the total height of 4. So I've got another example of a rectangle where in this case we have half the height. So our base is 4, our height is 2, and I could find the area of that related rectangle. 4 times 2 is 8 squared centimeters. And again, if you don't like this strategy, some people don't, feel free to actually draw a bigger related rectangle, maybe one like this. Now we have um, a length of 4, a width of 4, that's 4 times 4, which would give you 16 for the entire related rectangle. But if you cut 16 in half, what do you get? 8. If you look at your formula sheet, you can see the formula for finding the area of a triangle is up towards the top. Now there's a couple ways that you could think of this formula. It's one half times the base times the height. Again, feel free to write on your formula sheet if this helps you. You could write one half times the base times the height. Or maybe you want to write it as base times height divided by two. A lot of people prefer to use that method because they don't have to worry about the fraction multiplication. You know that finding half of something means dividing it by 2. Alright, moving on to workbook page um, 48, the bottom now. This right triangle has sides of length C, D, and E. Write a formula for the area of any right triangle. So they're using C, D, and E to represent the different lengths. Meaning, we're going to write a formula, we're going to use variables for it. Well, I'm probably going to start with the letter A because I'm talking area. And what I would need to do is I would need to figure out my base and my height. Remember, the formula in the formula sheet looked like this. We needed a base and a height. Base and height are always going to be perpendicular. Perpendicular means that they intersect to form 90 degree angles. Your base and height will always form a 90 degree angle, which means E is not going to be a base, nor is it going to be a height. I'm going to use C and D because C and D intersect right there where my 90 degree angle is. I have perpendicular sides, base and height. So keep that in mind. Base and height will always be perpendicular. So I would need to do one half times C times D. Or maybe if you don't want to use that one half option, another way to write it could be C times D divided by 2. So that's another option. Uh, number 18, write a formula for the perimeter of any right triangle. Well, remember, perimeter is when you find the sum of all the outer edges, right? The distance all the way around the triangle. So, perimeter, P, is going to be equal to C plus D plus E. So, E was not used in number 17. We did not need to use um, E for finding the area, but we do need it for the perimeter. 
Um, can you find the missing side? Again, this is not one that's in your uh, workbook, but you may come across problems where you have to find the missing you know, base or height. So here, there's a couple ways to think about it. One way, think about the formula. Area equals one half times the base times the height. Well, your area is nine. Obviously, one half stays the same. We don't know the base, we do know the height. In this formula, there's only one thing I can do. I can do the one half times three. One half times three, that's gonna give me three over two, or one and one half. Meaning, I can turn that into nine equals one and one half, or if you want, you can change that to 1.5. So that's what one and one half looks like as a decimal, uh, times that missing base. So now, think about what you did with um, rectangles. Remember when you were trying to figure out the missing you know, base or height or length or width, you had to do some division. You could do that same thing here. You can take your 9, divide it by 1.5, and you'll have your missing measurement. Now, a lot of people find this to be a little confusing. There's another way you can go about this without having to worry about um, you know, multiplying by one half. The other way is to think about what you know of related rectangles. If I were to take this triangle, I know it's not perfect, and double it, that way I'd have my related rectangle. This triangle here has an area of 9. Well, guess what? This one also has an area of 9, meaning my total area for the whole related rectangle is 18 centimeters squared. That's both triangles together, 18 centimeters squared. So now I have a rectangle with an area of 18 centimeters squared. I've got a height or um, a width of three, and I'm missing that other side. How would you have done it this way? This is where you could have done that division that we had just mentioned. When you're trying to find the missing side of a rectangle, just divide by um, the side you do have. So 18 divided by 3 is going to give you 6. That missing side is 6. So the way we did that was we doubled the area of the triangle. We doubled the area of the triangle to make the related rectangle. And then we found the missing side just like we did when we were finding the missing side of any rectangle. We divided. Here are the takeaways for Lesson 2-2. First, um, definitions of right triangles and right angles. You should be very familiar with those. Uh, perpendicular, remember they're um, lines, line segments, or rays that intersect to form 90 degree angles. Uh, the related rectangle is a rectangle, typically a rectangle with the same base and height as its related triangle. And we have the formulas here. Um, and remember, I told you you could write those down on your formula sheet. There's different ways of looking at it. And lastly, to find the missing base or height of a right triangle, double the area, you know, to identify the area of the related rectangle, then divide by the given base or height.